Hey second graders, today we are going to read a couple more chapters in The Wild Robot. Chapter 22 is titled The New Word. A new word was spreading across the island. The word was Roz. Everyone was talking about the robot and they wanted nothing to do with her. I don't think I'll ever feel comfortable knowing that Roz is on the prowl. I hope Roz camouflages herself as a rock forever. Shh, there's Roz now. Let's get out of here. Roz wandered the island covered in dirt and green growing things, and everywhere she went she heard unfriendly words. The words would have made most creatures quite sad, but as you know, robots don't feel emotions, and in these moments that was probably for the best. Chapter 23, The Wounded Fox. So I'm wondering, friends, what does it mean if someone or something is wounded? Yeah, if you said hurt, that's what that means. It means that someone is hurt. My face, my beautiful face, someone help. Think the fox was laying on a log, howling in pain, with a face full of long, sharp quills when Roz appeared. Is there anybody else who can help? Would you like me to leave, said the robot. No, please don't go. I'll take what I can get. What happened? I didn't think the porcupine could see me in the bushes, but when I went for his throat, suddenly there were quills in my face. Why did you go for his throat? Why do you think? Because I was hungry. If you have not had not attacked the porcupine, you would not have quills in your face. Yes, Roz, I know that, but a fox has got to eat. I just didn't expect him to put up such a fight. Look, there are even quills in my paws. I can't walk. My face is numb. I could die if you don't help me. What would you like me to do, said the robot. I'd like you to pull out the quills. Roz calmly knelt beside Fink and said, I will pull out the quills. The robot started to tug on a quill, but it snapped off in her fingers. Fink yelped and said, pinch it closer to the skin. So Roz pinched the broken quill closer to the skin, and then very slowly she pulled it out. The fox winced in pain and said through his teeth, please, Roz, pull them out faster. This is agony. Roz quickly tugged out another quill, then another and another. The fox lay perfectly still, eyes closed tightly, wind whistling through his nose until every single quill had been removed and placed in a neat pile beside him. Fink struggled to his feet. Thanks, Roz. I, I owe you one. The fox smiled briefly and then he limped away. Chapter 24 is titled The Accident. As Roz wandered through springtime, she saw all the different ways that animals entered the world. She saw birds guarding their eggs like treasures until the chicks finally hatched. She saw deer give birth to fawns who were up and running in a matter of minutes. Many newborns were greeted by loving families. Some were on their own from their very first breath. And, as you're about to find out, a few poor goslings would never even get the chance to hatch. Roz was climbing down one of the forest cliffs when the accident happened. The wind started blowing out of the north, and suddenly clouds were rushing over the island. With the clouds came a spring shower, a downpour actually, and there was our robot clamping her hands onto a wet block of stone on the side of a cliff. But the block couldn't handle the extra weight, and as the heavy robot hung there, cracks suddenly shot through the stone and it started breaking apart. Down went the robot, plummeting into the treetops below. She crashed through branch after branch before finally hooking an arm around one. Then she dangled there, gently swinging as the rocks roared past her on their way to the forest floor. When the dust settled, Roz shimmied down the tree trunk. The ground was littered with broken rocks and splintered wood and pulverized shrubs, and within all the rubble was a goose nest that had been torn to shreds. Two dead geese and four smashed eggs lay among the carnage. The robot stared at them with her softly glowing eyes, and something clicked deep inside her computer brain. Roz realized she had caused the deaths of an entire family of geese. Chapter 25 is called The Egg. As Roz stood in the rain, staring down at these poor lifeless geese, her sensitive ears detected a faint peeping sound from somewhere nearby. She followed the peeps over to a clump of wet leaves on the ground. Then, and when she peeled back the leaves, she discovered a single perfect goose egg stuck in the mud. Mama, mama, peeped a tiny muffled voice from within the egg. The robot gently cradled the fragile thing in her hand. Without a family, the unhatched gosling inside would surely die. 
Laws knew that some animal had to die, some animals had to die for others to live. That's how the wilderness worked. But would she allow her accident to cause the death of yet another gosling? After a moment, the robot started to walk. Carefully holding the egg, she moved through the forest and away from the sad scene. But she didn't get far before Fink burst out from the bushes. What happened? The fox panted. The whole forest was shaking. There was an accident, said the robot. I was climbing those cliffs when the rocks started to fall. You should be more careful, said Fink as he checked out the robot's new scrapes and dents. I'll need your help if I ever have more porcupine trouble. I will be more careful. What do you have there, said Fink, looking up at Roz's hands. A goose egg. Oh, I love eggs. Can I eat it? No. Please? No. Why do, you, why do you want it? The fox scowled. I thought you didn't eat food. You may not have this egg, Fink. The fox sighed. He scratched his chin, and then he started sniffing the breeze. His nose had found the scent of the dead geese. You can keep your egg, he said, as he trotted towards the cliff. I smell something better. The robot walked on through the misty forest for a long time until she was standing beneath a sprawling oak tree. Ross placed the egg on a pad of moss. Then she snatched grass and twigs from the ground and delicately wove them together to make a little nest. She placed the egg inside the nest and placed the nest on her flat shoulder and climbed up into the bran branches. All right, we are going to read one more chapter. Chapter 26 is called The Performer. Up in the sprawling oak, the goose egg was peeping and wobbling around in its nest. Mama, mama, said the egg. I am not your mother, said the robot. The egg continued peeping and wobbling until nightfall when the gosling inside settled down to sleep and the egg became quiet and still. The robot was about to settle into her own kind of sleep when she heard something in the underbrush below. Roz peered down from the branches and saw weeds rustling in the moonlight. A creature was crawling past, but the creature stayed low, hiding in the darkest shadow so that Roz couldn't see what it was. Roz wasn't the only one watching. A pair of furry ears rose up behind a log. The ears belonged to a very hungry badger. He lay in wait as the shadowy creature came closer and closer, and when the time was right, the badger pounced. You might expect a creature under attack to run for her life, or to defend herself, or at the very least scream, but when the badger pounced, the creature just rolled onto her back, stuck out her tongue, and died. Not only was she dead, she was rotten, and the badger's face twisted with disgust. Blech, what a stench. He pawed at the stinky corpse a few times and then gave up. No thanks, he grumbled to himself. I'd rather eat beetles. And the badger hurried off to find a less disgusting meal. Had the mysterious creature been frightened to death? And how could her body possibly rot so quickly? Roz was confused, and the robot became considerably more confused an hour later. When the dead creature's ears began to flicker, her nose began to twitch, and she rolled onto her feet and went on her way as if nothing had happened. The robot's voice called down from the tree, Are you alive or are you dead? The creature's voice hissed up from the shadow, Who's there? Why have you been watching me? What, did you, what you just did was unbelievable, said Roz. I could not look away. Unbelievable, really? The creature's voice seemed to be softening. I thought perhaps I overdid it when I stuck out my tongue. I was certain you were dead. Oh, what a lovely thing to say. Were you dead? Well, of course not. Nobody can come back from the dead. It was just an act. I do not understand. It's simple. I knew that if I played dead and really laid it on thick, that old badger would be so disgusted that he'd run off. And that is exactly what happened. We possums are natural performers, you know. So you are a possum. Roz's computer brain quickly retrieved any information it had on possums. You are a marsupial and are nocturnal and are known for mimicking the appearance and smell of dead animals when threatened. It's true, dead scenes are my specialty, said the possum, but I had a wide range, believe me, I have a wide dramatic range, believe me. I believe you. Have you done any acting, said the possum? I have not, said the robot. Well, you should. You might enjoy it. You can start by imagining the character you'd like to be. How do they move and speak? What are their hopes and fears? How do others react to them? Only when the, you truly understand a character can you become that character. The two odd creatures sat there, one in a tree, the other in the weeds, and talked about acting. The possum went on and on about her various acting methods and her triumphant performances, and our robot absorbed every word. But why do you pretend to be something you are not? 
said the robot. Because it's fun, said the possum. And because it helps me survive as you just saw. You never know. It might help you survive too. Soon the robot's computer brain was humming with activity. Performing could be a survival strategy. If the possum could pretend to be dead, the robot could pretend to be alive. She could act less robotic and more natural. And if she could pretend to be friendly, she might make some friends. And they might help her live longer and better. Yes, this was an excellent plan. Roz wasted no time and spoke her next word in the words in the friendliest voice she could muster. Madame Marsupial, it would be a great honor to and absolute privilege if you would kindly inform me of your name. Roz's friendly demeanor needs some work, but it was a start. Yes, of course, said the possum. My name is Pinktail, and you are? Leaves gently shook as Roz climbed down from the tree. It is a very lovely pleasure to meet your acquaintance, my dear Pinktail. A moment later, the robot stepped into the moonlight. My name is Roz. Oh my, the possum gasped. You're the, the m m monster. I am not a monster. I am a robot and I am harmless. Harmless, really? Well, you do seem rather gentle. And I heard someone say that you don't eat any food at all, which makes no sense, but hopefully it means you won't eat me. I will not eat you, said the robot. I'm so glad to hear that, said the possum. And a moment later, she too stepped into the moonlight. It's nice to meet you, Roz. A weak smile appeared, a smile appeared on Pinktail's pointy face. Roz thought things were going really well, but she didn't know what to say next. Neither did Pinktail. So the two friendly creatures just stood there together and listened to the crickets for a while. Well, I should be on my way, said Pinktail at last. Have a nice evening, Roz. Have the nicest evening, Pinktail. I shall look forward to the pleasure of encountering you again in the future. Soon, I hope. Farewell. With that awkward goodbye, Pinktail slipped back into the weeds and Roz climbed back into the tree. All right, my friends, we will start back up with chapter 27 next time. Happy reading!